Thank you for asking about, about grief and how to support others. And that was, um, that was something that I've been interested in all of my life. How can I support other people? And, um, but it had been really, it had been an interest of mine, but not something that I ever really felt capable of doing because I was so busy and caught up with what I was thinking and feeling and experiencing. Um, you know, just everything that we experience as a human being on a, on a daily basis. Um, happiness and sadness and attraction and um, loneliness and um, boredom and feeling too hot and feeling strange sensations in my stomach and, you know, I was just so busy with everything that was going on for me. And, um, and, uh, and in the balance view training, all of those descriptions or experiences, we can just call data and it just simplifies everything. I was just busy with my data. And um, when I was in situations where the experience or the data was really intense, um, and we all go through those times in our life where, where things just happen. And, you know, we're in those challenging situations and there's really intense, powerful emotions and not just our own, but of other people and people we may care about deeply. Um, it was obvious to me then that, you know, I, I wanted to be this, this support for the people in my life, but no matter how good my intentions were, I was still just so busy with what was going on for me. And in those situations, the intensity of what I was feeling seemed to demand even more attention than normal. Um, so one of my strategies of, of dealing with that and dealing with life in general was just to avoid that as much as possible. Um, to try and not put myself in those situations, to avoid challenging family circumstances to um, basically to not show up and to avoid all of those really difficult thoughts and emotions that would just sometimes be there. But no matter how hard I tried to avoid them, they, they would still be there. No matter how far I ran, they would follow me. And so it was amazing to be introduced to this simple practice of short moments of just having the opportunity to become familiar with the nature of everything that I was thinking and feeling and sensing and seeing, well, what are all of these things that I've been trying to avoid all my life? And what are these really intense emotions and these really challenging thoughts that I can spend days or weeks or even months sort of thinking about one thing and, you know, distracting myself with something or trying to replace it with something more pleasant to think about, but it would always come back and I would be thinking about that thing that happened 20 years ago or whatever it was or something somebody had said, you know, last week and I'd still be mulling it over. And, and so to be introduced to just a different approach to, to dealing with life, basically, was to see that for a short moment I could test out for myself what happens when I just rest naturally, when I allow everything just to be as it is, rather than trying to avoid certain thoughts and emotions and experiences or um, indulging some things. So really thinking about things obsessively would be one kind of indulgence. And I used to do that about many things. Um, and then replacing some things. So when I would feel um, sad or lonely, um, I would try and replace that with um, feeling happy. I'd work out, well, what can I do to cheer myself up? And, you know, that, that would kind of work, but the loneliness and the sadness would just come back again at some point. And so it was a constant struggle to try and manage what I was thinking and feeling and sensing and manage my experience. And, um, and I did get quite skillful at that, and I managed to set up a life that looked incredible. You know, I had ticked all the boxes that I was hoping to tick. Um, what was that intimate partner, financial stability, good physical health. I was eating really well, living in a beautiful place in nature. Um, you know, it just sort of took me, I think it took me about 10 years to set up those life circumstances. And, um, 
and, um, and then waking up one morning and feeling like it was all completely pointless. There was still something missing. And, um, and that was actually really a profound recognition because I saw that what I was looking for couldn't be found in setting up a set of descriptions or life circumstances that I thought was going to make me happy. And it was around that time that I did meet the Balanced View Training and this simple practice. And so to see, I was given this suggestion, well, why don't you test just for a short moment, again, just relax, stop describing everything, and allow everything to be as it is, and, and see what happens. And, um, and I can remember testing that out for the first time, and there was this, just this sense of relaxation, where I didn't need to try and manage everything, I didn't need to try and understand everything. I could just simply allow everything to be as it was. I could allow myself to be as I was. And the sense of relief and the sense of recognition that this openness that I accessed in this simple short moment of just stopping the descriptions, this sense of clarity, this sense of the recognition of actually the indivisibility of everything that I was thinking, feeling and sensing, everything that I've been trying to avoid, indulge or replace. And to see that all of that was simply this dynamic flow, this dynamic expression of this open intelligence that was naturally present. I didn't have to generate it, all I had to do was relax for a short moment and, and acknowledge it. And every time I did that, there was this sense of, of relief, there was this sense of relaxation. I was just clearer on what was going on for me. I could see this learned habit of telling all of these stories about everything that I thought and felt and experienced. And in the short moment it was like um, I was just cutting that story. So rather than perpetuating the story about um, how I didn't want to face this circumstance or this emotion was too painful or too intense or I would just cut that description at the root and just rest naturally and allow everything to be as it was. And there was such a sweetness in that approach because I could see that there wasn't actually anything that I needed to avoid anymore. That I could experience everything from that place of complete stability and it was this openness of intelligence that was completely stable. It, it was always there. It, it never went anywhere. And although at the beginning I wasn't quite sure about that because it seemed so incredible, but it was so obvious to me, you know, and when I just stopped describing, just relaxed naturally, there it was. There was this intelligence experiencing everything. And I saw that all I'd been doing was focusing on the descriptions, on the data streams, so intently I hadn't noticed what the basis of all of them was. And particularly with the really intense ones where um, the descriptions just seem so demanding of attention that at the beginning short moments just didn't seem to be an option um, because I was just so caught up in what was going on that it was amazing to discover that, that there was a support that all it would do was remind me to relax and allow everything to be as it was. And I, so I started listening to lots of talks and the, you can download them from the website for free. And every time I listened to these talks, it reminded me just to relax for a short moment and allow everything to be as it was. And in that moment, there was an instinctive recognition of the fundamental okayness that regardless of what I was thinking, feeling, sensing or experiencing, there was something about me that was absolutely stable and constant. And I could identify that for myself. And it was the basis of whatever I was thinking, feeling or sensing. I didn't need to change what I was experiencing so I could recognize open intelligence. It was in whatever I was thinking, feeling or experiencing. And that was amazing. All I had to do was notice that. And, and that changed everything. That, that really changed everything. And I, as, I, as I continue to practice this, and I continue to practice it because the results are so profound, um, just a deeper and deeper insight and understanding into the nature of reality, but not in some kind of, well, also including this abstract philosophical way, which I actually really was always interested in as well, 
but much more powerfully in a very practical way. So I began to see that I could actually stand tall and that there was this natural dignity that was gentle and beautiful and powerful that I always had access to. And that through reliance on open intelligence and using the support, there wasn't anything that I couldn't experience. And the perspective shifted and seeing that what I was doing was allowing everything to be as it was and opening up my intelligence so that I could be of support to other people in a much more powerful way. And as I got more and more comfortable with my experience, you know, with the intensity of everything that I might experience on a day-to-day -day basis, just becoming comfortable through repeating the short moments, just allowing it to be as it was, and then collapsing into the descriptions, and then relaxing, taking another short moment, and allowing it to be as it was, gaining confidence and assurance in this way, that it was open intelligence on which and upon which I could really rely. The data were always changing. I couldn't rely on my thoughts or emotions. They're always changing. Open intelligence was always constant, though. So, through that practice, um, I found that in those situations where, again, I'm in that challenging circumstance and the people that I'm with and love dearly really need support, through training up in open intelligence and seeing that I really can encompass everything whilst relying on open intelligence, there isn't anything that I need to be afraid of anymore. I can experience everything fully whilst relying on open intelligence. From that vantage and through practicing it, really putting it into practice and testing it, I discovered, much to my delight, that in that circumstance there was actually access to open intelligence when I needed it, because I'd been practicing and training it up. And I was able to be there and to be an open-hearted, loving, powerful support to the people in my life whilst experiencing everything fully. And it was only through experiencing everything fully, whilst relying on open intelligence, so allowing all of my data to be as they were, that I could be this stable, loving, powerful support for the people in my life. Otherwise, I was so caught up with what was going on for me. And actually, that was not what was required. What was required was this support for other people. And I've discovered that I have that power and I have that capacity. And that's the most incredible gift, I think, that I've received from this training, is that actually I do have the power to be there for other people in a way that I had no idea I was capable of. And um, that's why when you come in you see Balanced View for the benefit of all. I've benefited immensely from this training, incredibly. Um, I know that I'm okay. I'm really okay. I have the wildest display of data every day. You know, happy, sad, hungry, physical pain, boredom, happiness again. It's just this wild display. But throughout it all, I know what's constant and I know what I can rely on and I know that I'm okay. And so from that vantage, from that okayness, for the first time in my life, I'm actually available to support other people and to be available to help other people. And that's the shift from, from self-focus and self-centeredness um, to all focus and all centeredness, which, which includes me. I don't have to be a martyr. I don't need to pretend I don't feel everything. I can be very gentle and loving with myself. But I have to show that gentleness, loving and understanding to myself with the relationship with my own data, my own thoughts and emotions and experiences, so that I can have that connection and understanding and power to support other people. And that's the only way I've discovered that I'm able to do that. Otherwise, my intensity of experience is what becomes the focus in that situation. Um, so it's incredible to, to see that. We have this power to be of great benefit. And actually, that's what we're training up here. And it does take some courage and it takes some commitment. And, um, but I see it's the most incredible thing that I could possibly have wished for in my life. And um, the support is there. I tried to do it on my own for a while, and I had some success with doing that, with taking short moments. And I began to become more comfortable with many um, experiences and thoughts and 
powerful emotions, but there were still some things that just seemed to have this grip over me and seemed to, um, it was like being a puppet on a string. You know, some one thought or one emotion would come up and I would find myself reacting in this kind of, um, in this habitual way. Even though now I knew about open intelligence and I knew that the data didn't have this power and yet still they seemed to have this power and it was, a bit, it was even more frustrating. So um, that's when I decided to participate more fully in the training because I saw the results of kind of dipping my toe in. And the more that I've participated, the more I've been able to extract the power of benefit from all data to really see that there is nothing nothing that I need to be afraid of or avoid anymore. And that for me has been a, a gradual process of seeing with more and more clarity really what are the things that I believe have this power and that I do avoid certain people, places, things, emotions. Um, and they just reveal themselves to be these gems. Whilst I'm trying to avoid them, indulge them or replace them, they seem to be a threat or seem to be something that I need to be afraid of in some way. And yet as soon as I light them up in this, this brilliance of open intelligence, actually what they are are these gems of beneficial potency. And um, it's only been through the use of the support that I've been able to do that. Because there's some things that just seem so dark, so embarrassing, so wrong about me, about my experience, about my thoughts, about my emotions, that it's only very gently and very gradually, and with this support, that I found the courage to face them all exactly as they are. And each time I do that, there is um, just more and more brilliance in my own experience, more and more brightness of, of beneficial potency, even in these darkest corners. Um, so I'm incredibly grateful for the support that I've had and continue to have to just light up everything and see it for what it really is. Not the, not the stories that I've been told about what it is and have been telling myself about what things are. Really seeing for myself the reality and the truth of what's really going on. So thank you all so much for being here and um, yeah, it really is an uh, incredible honour and privilege to share this training. If you're interested in finding out more, we have a, a one-day introductory training today, which is a chance to be with the texts that we share in this training, which are so powerful because they elicit this instinctive recognition. If you're still not quite sure about what's going on here, then you're very welcome to come to the introductory training and find out more, or you can just come back to some open meetings. Um, certainly for me, it took a few meetings for it to really settle in and be increasingly obvious what was actually being spoken about here. Even if there were some things I resonated with, there were many things I didn't understand. And just by showing up, that becomes clearer and clearer without you needing to do anything. <laughs>